Good evening. Today, let us see what are the vaccines that we need to offer our son or daughter who's moving out of your home to the hostel. So first of all, we need to know that if your child is going out to the hostel, he's naturally going to be exposed to many infections. So how do you prevent them? During the first visit, when they come to you, offer TD or Tdap vaccine if the child has not taken the 16-year booster. If it's taken a 16-year booster, the next TD is due only 10 years later. Also offer him first dose of chickenpox vaccine, first dose of typhoid conjugate vaccine, first dose of hepatitis A, and offer an MMR vaccine if he or she has taken less than two doses of MMR previously. Ask the uh, patient to come one month later to receive the second dose of chicken pox as well as the second dose of MMR if previously only one dose of MMR has been taken because every child or adolescent should have received two doses of MMR previously. Six months later you can offer the second dose of hepatitis A irrespective of whether you have given the child a live vaccine or a killed vaccine. What if your child is joining a medical profession? He needs to be sure that he has received hepatitis B vaccine. It's not only for his protection, but it is also to protect the patients whom he's going to encounter. So if you have a documented evidence of receiving hepatitis B vaccine in the a childhood, you don't have to take the vaccine. Otherwise, you have to take three doses of vaccine, zero, second dose one month later, and the third dose six months later. If you have previously uh, taken the vaccine, but you don't have a document, you can look for the antibody levels. If it is more than 10 IU, most of them have more than 100 IU, you don't have to take a vaccine. If it is less, you can take a single booster, recheck the um, vaccine titer, and if it is more than 10, you don't have to take further vaccines. What about if your child is an asthmatic or he is going to a place, to a country where winters are quite severe and where influenza is common, or is it a rainy season where he always gets upper and lower respiratory infections, then you can offer him a single dose of influenza vaccine, whichever the latest vaccine which is available. Now, what if your child is going to a polio endemic country or going to a country which is currently having a polio outbreak? Remember, last year we had close to 23 countries reporting polio. And this year, it is already more than 16 countries who are reporting polio. That means it includes the vaccine derived polio virus also. In that situation, you are expected to take a single dose of OPV or IPV before going to the country. It's preferable to take within four weeks. They say that a vaccination certificate should be there, that you have received the vaccine a single dose in the last one year, irrespective of previous vaccination status. That means even if you have taken all the childhood vaccines, you need to take a single dose of polio. If you have not taken any doses of polio previously, that means you are an unimmunized person, then you would like to have to take three doses of IPV, one today, the second dose one month later, and the third dose six months later. Now, what if you are traveling to a meningitis belt, the African meningitis belt, or traveling to US, UK, or European countries where they mandate that adolescents should receive a single dose of quadrivalent meningococcal conjugate vaccine? At present in India, we have two brands available, any one you can take. What if your child has not been immunized previously for some reason, if he has not taken any tetanus toxoid containing vaccine, be it PPT or TDA, then he would require three doses of tetanus toxoid containing vaccine. The preferable is first dose, let it be TDA. The second dose one month later can be TD and the third dose six months later can again be a TD. So that's all. Thank you.